We're getting the current daf, and the sect is become a daf your test. We begin four lines down at the top of the Ahmed. The Gemara continues the discussion regarding this, uh, this uh, mazik of Tzreiris, <clears throat> regarding different questions, regarding different opinions, regarding in different situations would the halach of Tzreiris be different than what we know it as Chatzin Nezik. In the previous step we discussed regarding if it becomes a mood, it does it three times. Generally, like we explained by Karen, when you have Chatzin Nezik, you do it three times from Nezik Shalom. The question is, does Tzreiris also become Nezik Shalom? Now the Gemara is going to actually ask the other way around. Could we actually make the Chatzin Nezik Tzreiris into half of what it normally is, meaning to revere Nezek because of the fact that it would be uh, that of abnormal, would you say that that would make it like by abnormal of a regular Mazik, it makes it half, instead of being Nezek Shalom, when it's Keren, it's Chatzin Nezek, would you say the same thing regarding Tzrei Reis, which also regular Mazik, would you say half of that and make it into a revere Nezek? She's goes from Kazakh and Cheska, turned them to the Chemshin, turned them to the Stop, and it should be as close for Chedim and Israel. And it's still and throughout the whole world. So we're discussing today's daf are like we said the mazik of tzreiris, which is unique, very unique. It opens us up to very unique discussions because tzreiris, although it's a regular mazik, and it's urche, uh, it's a talad de bregel, but it's halacha mishmasin, it's chatzinezik, and that therefore the, there are certain questions regarding how what the parameters of the mazik is, um, and regarding what do we compare it to. One of the questions that our gemara opens up with is like we said shino tzreiris. That if you do tzreiris in a mishunadig way, which like by regular mazik downgrades it halfway, will only obligate you into half. Like mekeren, which is mishunad, it's not normal, it's abnormal, so it's only going to be chazinazik. Would you say that that would make tzreiris, which starts off as a quote unquote mood as nezik shalom, would mishunad make it down to revin nezik into a quarter of the damages? Which that relates back to the discussion of the previous stuff, which we actually said the other way around, hadal tzreiris. Would we say that, okay, it starts with Chatzin Nezik. When you do it three times, just like Keren, then the, the, the it does become Nezik Shal. Also, part of that discussion comes with the Kayach Kaychai, which is Tzreiris, is Kaychai, which is the, the animals walking and the pebble shoot out. That's Kaychai, but then what's with Kayach Kaychai? What's if then that pebble that shot out broke a vessel, and then now that vessel broke, and now shattered something else? Well, that's the force of the force. What do we say that parameter regarding Tzreiris? The Gemara also discussed regarding Hatiz of Rishas Rabbim. If the animal's walking and it sprays the pebbles in Rishas Rabbim, What's the halacha if it breaks something in Rishos Rabbim? What happens if it breaks something in Rishos Yochad? The reason why it's a significant question is because, as we know, Shana regular potter Rishos Rabbim. It says, be your bestay acher. It has to be in someone else's field. Question is, we know that Tzreir is a talad of regal. So then, essentially, when it does the damage in Rishos Rabbim, it should be potter. On the other hand, in a way, it's similar to Karen, that it's chatzinazik. Maybe you would be chayiv. And what would be the halacha if it then damages in Rishos Yochad? Also, in the Gemara's discussion, the Gemara brings up the, the, the mazik of Bar. It says in the Torah, Ishbar, a man has a pit, which is Vlei Shoibar, but not if his ox makes a pit, which we'll see exactly what does that mean. And however, the halacha bar meskalga, that you could be liable if you make a pit, then the animal then continues it by kicking it away. Then if it damages in that other place, it could be that you will be liable from a tzad hashava of bar and another mazik together. Hashem is lech lezavola, and the concept that the mazik of shein is considered mood only to eat that which is fit for it, not for that which is not for it. An animal will only be a machine if it eats something, a normal type of food, and not like a rope or something like that. So we begin the current daf, the daf to test, four lines down with that Muhammad. We had mentioned Tzreus Kirachayu. An animal kicks up stones as it walks, and the stones cause damage. We had a machlik is Rabban and Sumchas. Rabban hold, as we were mentioning all along, Tzreus Mesham Chatzin Ezek, Allah Chamech Vesinai, only Chatzin Ezek but Tzreus. Sumchas holds no Tzreus Mesham Ezek Shalom, Koyche Kagufadami. It's the same thing like the regular Mazik of Regal. Now, the Gemara starts off with Boyer Vashi. Vashi has a question. According to their Abbanan, they disagree on Sumchas. And they say that Tzreiris in this normal way is going to be only Chatzin Nezek. You have the following question. Yesh shino litzreiris l'revia Nezek? What happens if, let's say, the animal does the Tzreiris in an abnormal way? For example, let's say it kicks with its foot. And because it kicks, not because it's walking, it kicks. So it, it sprays pebbles, and it breaks vessels. Would we consider this as abnormal, which is keren, is always abnormal. That's why, that's part of the characteristics of keren. That's mishune. Okay, we say mishune keren, mishune sanizik. So would we say that that would make the tzreus into a tam? And therefore, just like by the mazik of keren, because it's abnormal the first few times until it becomes normal for this animal, we downgrade it from the full damage that it has to half of it. Would you say... That by Tzreiris, which starts off a Chatzin the first few times, meaning when it's abnormal, normally 
Travis is normal. It's when it walks. So therefore, it would, it's Nezik Shalom, it's Chazi Nezik, because Allah Mesh Messina. Would you say when it does it abnormally, the first few times, you'd pay a quarter of the damage, because when it's moved, it's Chazi Nezik. So therefore, it's Tam, it's a quarter of the Nezik. Or do we say that no, there's no abnormality for Tzoreus to make it downgraded to have a dam- to the quarter of the damages, to pay a quarter, because it's always going to be Chatzin because there's no Tam and Muid regarding Tzoreus, because we don't find anywhere Tam to pay less than half. So that's the most question, is it going to be Mishun Tzoreus Revin Nezik, or will it maintain its Chatzin Nezik? says the Gemara, Tav Shlim and the Rav. We can answer this question from Rav, because the boy Rav, we had mentioned the previous Tav, Rav, I hear it's not that's not that's because we give you a cap a limit meaning it's not it's not inherently in the in the liability you have it's just that the collection which is an interesting point is this there's liability and there's collections but liability you have for collections you could only collect from from the from the gufa I hear what you're saying it's a good point that would be the the, the pshat why why that's different so the Gemara says let's resolve it from Rav on the previous daf but Rav Rav had asked a question he said, I have a question. The other way around. Yeshadol at Tzreiris? He wanted to know, when you do Tzreiris three times, does it become a mood to become Nezik Shalom? Or is there no mood for Tzreiris? It's like the Gemara. Machlal dein Shinoi. Obviously, Rav held, there's no such thing as 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 Shinoi, because, as Mishunah, as, as, because if there would be, to say that when you do an abnormal Tzreiris, it becomes a quarter so then, its mood is chatzinezik. So why would Rav have to ask the question? Most definitely, there's no mood to pay nezik shalom because the tam is the quarter of a damage. The mood is chatzinezik. We this, uh, this what to say about this regarding? Well, well, it maybe if depends if the girsa was by urche or was mishuna. That really would depend. Well, if you recall from the previous daf that we were saying what Rav's question was on, was it on when you do it mishuna three times? Remember, there was two interpretations in Rashi. But Akapon, for sure the one that held that the question was regarding Mishunah, when you do Keren, when you do the Tzreir, is abnormal. But now it's Keren. Okay, now you do it three times. Now it should become Muid and should be Nezik Shalom, like a regular Keren. But you see from Rabbi's question that obviously he didn't hold, like Ravashi's question, that, that if you do it abnormal, it should be quarter. Uh, and then what? And then when you do three times, then what's it going to be? Chatzin Nezik. So what's Rabbi asking about making a Muid into Nezik Shalom? Obviously, he held it's Chatzin Nezik, and the question was, oh, but does it become Nezik Shalom? So the Gemara says, no, not a Raya. Dilma Rabbah and Tim You could say Rabbah saying, in, and if you're going to say, meaning Rabbah wasn't sure about both of these points. And he was asking, number one, like Ravashi's question, that is there such a concept of Shinoi or not? In other words, would we maybe say that Tzreiris, when you do it abnormally, when he's kicking because he's angry, this act which is not normal, it's going to be a quarter of the damages. And then, and then if you say that, no, there is no shinu, meaning it's, it's Tom is the Chatzin Nezik, you're not going to say that by doing it abnormal, you're going to downgrade half into a quarter. Then my question is the second question. Yes, uh, yes hada, is there a, making a mood to this Tom of Chatzin Nezik? Or there's no mood. So it's, okay, you're right. It, it, you could have both questions and take on that it stand. It's not clear which interesting questions. My Tzreir is, would we say maybe it'll sometimes pay a quarter damage? Or maybe no, maybe it actually sometimes will pay even Nezik Shalem. It's not clear in the Gemara what the status of that would be regarding its first times and regarding when it becomes a mood. For sure, when if it does it in the abnormal way, the Gemara says, let it stand. Now, another question from, says the Gemara, Rabbi Vashi. Vashi has the following question. He wants to know, according to Sumchis, when you do it with the force of the force, would you say kekoichei dami? Remember, Sumchis is the one who held that Tzreiris pays Nezik Shalom. And he held koichei is kegufei dami. Not like Drabon that Tzreiris is chatzin Nezik. So the question Ravashi wants to know is would you say is it kekoichei dami? Would it also have the same halacha of the force of the force? I or not. So what's the question? The Gemara explains. Mi gamar halacha. Did, did Sumchis hold of the halacha of Sinai? That yeah, chatzin Nezik of Tzreiris, that there is such a halacha. But a muki lebekar kaiche. It's not like he didn't hold the It's not like he didn't have, he had the halacha much He just said that that was by kaiche kaiche. But kaiche is kagufa. That's like the gufa itself. Why would I say it would be chazinazik? 
Or maybe he doesn't have the Allah Mesh Mazina at all. So you want to take a little test, it's not clear what some Chris would hold by Kayak Kaikha. Would he hold that then there would be Khatinazik? Versus the first Torah that comes out that that's Kagufa Dami and therefore that's gonna be Nazik Shalom? Or does he not have it at all? And therefore it doesn't make it difference. Kayak Kaikha Kaikha whatever it's all gonna be the Mazik of Regal and it's gonna be Chaib Nazik Shal. Now the, the Mishnah had said that Hisimiva etas. So the Gemara just wants to know how to translate because the Mishnah read like this. So if the animal kicked something and broke it, or if it kicked stones and the utensils and broke them, so he said the owner is liable for half the damages. Now the thing is the Gemara just doesn't know how to read the, the sentences. The following question. How do you read the Mishnah? It's just a technical question really just to know who is the author of the Mishnah. Do you read like this? That if it kicked, and what? And the damage with its kick, meaning without Tzoreris, which is obviously a Tolod of Karen. Okay, that we know is Chatzinezik. Now, how do you read the next words? Oi, Tzoreris Ke'urchayu? And then when it says about pebbles coming out, was the regular Tzoreris? And and Misham Chatzinezik, and that's where you're going to be also Chatzinezik, which Rabbanon, obviously in the time of Misham Rabbanon, I didn't know. Maybe read the mission like this. If it was kicking, okay, that case everyone agrees on is and that damage would is kick. Oh, now this is the, the, the question. Tzoreris, when it talks about the Oishay Tzoreris Menatsin, that Tzoreris, is that Machmas Biyut? Is that Tzoreris because of the kick? And then Misham Chatzinezik? Then that type of a Tzoreris, which is obviously Karen, is going to be Chatzinezik? Oh, but if it was in the normal way, Misham Nezik Shalom, they would pay full damages. Umani, and who is the time of the Mishnah? Sumchas, he would be Sumchas. That's the Gemara's question about how do you read the Mishnah. It says, the Gemara, Toshmami Seifa. We could resolve it from the end of the Mishnah. And the Mishnah says, Dar Salaklin, if the animal stepped on the vessel, the Shibartoi, and it broke it, Benofala Shevra Kli Achar, Bishavroi, and then a piece of the, from the broken piece shard shoots out and breaks another vessel. So the, the state of our Mishnah says, On the first one, you pay the full damages. And on the second one, you pay half damages. It says the Gemara, If the Mishnah was like Sumchis, What do you mean? Does he hold of Chatzin Nezik? He doesn't. He holds Sreiris as Nezik Shalom. So obviously the Mishnah is not like Sumchis, and you would have to read it like the Rabbanon, that it's Tzorah's Kirochayu that we're saying is Gimichat Chatzinezik. Says Gemara, and Bechitim, we begin to say, no, maybe it's not difficult. Maybe we'll say Rishon, when it says the first one, it doesn't mean the first one you stepped on. It means Rishon Lahataza. It means the, the vessel that broke because of the shards that broke from the other one that shot out, that we're calling the first one. So even though the Tzorah is, you are going to pay Nezik Shalom because that is Sumchis. And Vesheni, when we say the second one is Chatzinezik, is Sheni Lahataza is the second one for the shattering. For example, let's say the one that broke from, from the Tzoreris. Now, it itself had a shard and broke a third vessel, which is Koyach Oh, and that's why it's going to be Chatzinezik, even according to Sumchis, because Vishani Leila Sumchis bin Koyach Le Koyach Koychai. Sumchis differentiates between Koychai and Koyach Koychai. And then you'll be able to say the mission is even like Sumchis. Says the Gemara, that men Elohod the Ravashi, but then this the Ravashi asked. Koyach koyach le sumchis. According to sumchis, the Allah of koyach koyach is kukoyach adami, or love kukoyach adami, is it like his force or not? Well, then, tivshale, then you should be able to resolve Ravashi's question, the love kukoyach adami, that it's not like koyach, because you're explaining the Mishnah then like sumchis, and you're seeing that sumchis is differentiating between koyach and koyach koyach, that the first Torah is, is Nezik Shalm, the second one is Chatzin Nezik. It says Gemara, that's not difficult on Ravashi. Ravashi kerabana mukila. Ravashi explains, oh, you want to tell me that you could say the Mishnah is like Sumchis. Rav Ashi, however, he explains the Mishnah like the Rabbanan. And he actually explains that the, the, the suffix actually of the Gemara is not if you're like the Rabbanan or like Sumchis. Rather, this question Rav Ashi had asked before of if there's yes shin litzreiris or there's no shinoi, it was on our Mishnah that he had asked us. And it was actually this question that he had actually asked. 
Meaning like this. It's in the Mishnah itself that he was asking this question. And that's because he's going like the Rabbanan, not like Simchas, which the Rabbanan generally hold, it's Chatzay Nezik. And this question was in how do you read the Mishnah? So our question of reading the Mishnah, which we thought was a question, if it's like Simchas Rabbanan, which then we wanted to say, oh, maybe the Mishnah is Simchas, and then you could answer Rav Ashi's question. Rav Ashi says, no. Listen, listen to how I'm going to ask the question of how you read the Mishnah. And it's all going in the Pinyar Abanan. And that's actually the source of Ravasi's question prior about is the Shin Mitzrayim or not? Haisim of Etes Vezik of Eutu. So that one agrees how you read the, that part of that case of the Mishnah. If it was kicking and the damage, but it's kicking, okay, that's going to be Chatzinez. Oh, Tzrayim. So when it talks about the case of Tzrayim, is that Kerachai in the normal way? That that's where it's going to be Chatzinez again, because Rabban holds it's Chatzinez. But the inference would be Hamachim is Beut, but if it happened because they're kicking Revianazik via Shinui, it would be half of the half. It would be a quarter of the damages because they're Shinui. I didn't maybe know. I said, maybe at this, it was kicking, but Zikibi Beut and the damage when it's kicking. Oi, Sreiris Machim is Beut. Or when they talk about the case of the pebbles, it's because of the kick. And that even there it's going to be Chatzinazik. Because we ain't Shinui, we don't say that there's a Shinui in Sreiris to take Sreiris down from Chatzin to Revianazik. On that take, let it stand. Ravashi says, you can't resolve my question from the Mishnah. Even if you, because there's nothing to do with Sumchas or Rabbanan. The, 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 the inference is, is, is totally different. It's, the Mishnah is like Rabbanan. And then the question is how you read it regarding if it's, if it's, if it's the Torah has happened through Be'ita, through kicking it, Mishnah or not, was the question. Now, depending how you're going to read it, it's going to be, would you say that it would be Revian Nezik or would it remain Chatz Nezik? But the Gemara either way says, take a let it stand. But the Gemara says, another question. And the law, some say it's Rabbi Chibra Abba. He asked the following question. Let's say the animal was walking in the chutzr of the nizik, in the victim's property, again, because remember the, 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 the mazik of regal, which Tereus is part of, is only Bershus on nizik, has to be a beer beste acher. So he's walking in the chutzr of nizik, and it's full of pebbles. But Makam Shi E. Efshalah, it's not possible. When the animal have walked, Elam came in the Tezah, it has to be shooting pebbles. You know, driving your car with those, pebbles, those roads, you know, you can be shooting out pebbles. It's inevitable. So the animal's walking. It's not possible that it wasn't going to. Now, but, Ubata, even though it, it would inevitably have shot forth anyway as it walked, but it kicked. The Tezah and it sprayed pebbles, Vazika, and it caused damage. Ma, what's the question? What's the question? Sigmar explains. Kivin the EE, Absalom, since it wouldn't have been possible for it to have walked. Without having kicked the tzrayus, so uchihu, so it's normal. It's like regular tzrayus, and then you'll therefore you'll pay chatzinezik. I tell him maybe hashdemi, but now machmas biet kmenat the tzrayus, but it's because of its kicking that it caused pebbles to shoot forth. And in other words, as Rashi explains the Gemara's question, and if you're going to say there's a loch of shein le tzrayus, would you say now it's going to be revia nezik, because it and therefore it's going to pay only a, a revia the nezik, or would you say not? We just say that no, ultimately, um, it's going to be chatzinezik uh, because it is considered as, as, as normal. Russia brings a different interpretation that uh, it's normal and it's going to be tzroyus who told it the regal, and therefore, even if it becomes a, a, a muid, uh, a, it's only going to pay chatzinezik because, anyways, it would have kicked, or maybe you say it's because of the kicking, it becomes muid that way, it would pay nezik shalom because it's mishuna, it would be told of the karen, al kaponim. That's the question, and the Gemara says, take a let it stand. It's not clear because it would have. So, would you say that's Urche? Or would you say, no, the mice are kicked, so it's abnormal. So, therefore, how do you qualify the normal part? The fact that it, we expect it to happen, which it would have happened, or the fact that he, that was his Kabbana, so it's abnormal. You know, it's an interesting question. You could probably get into the Smurfs about what, what would make it uh, dependent on, 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 on the circumstances or on the, on the animal itself. Nikimar has another question. What's his question? Okay, and this is very important. The animal's walking in the street. Now, again, the reason why we say that's so significant. What? No, what do you mean? The, the, oh, you want to know? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing of, of no, we'll see later on about what happens is, is if you, you can't say, you can't, you, you, you can't say Turkish Rishos in my body, then I'm saying that we'll see what does it mean, Rishos, what, what is the type of Rishos, whatever. A regular animal goes into someone else's property. So, so that's, that's when the Hazik happens, and it's like, okay, you cause damage. So that's Beer Bistiacha. Now, the Gemara says, what happens if it's walking the street? 
And again, like we're saying, this the street is significant because street, you're putter, because it's regal. But some girsoyes have this, it's taken out, the butter, the kicked. Well, the it's not part of the girso. So Betiz Bezika says walking in the street and it sprays and it damages. Ma, what's the halacha? So what's the question? So Rashi explains. On the one hand, le keren medaminula, would you say that we compare it to keren? Why? Because since its liability is only chatzinezik like keren, it's like keren. And therefore v'chayebes. Keren b'shut sadabim is chayev. So would you say tzoreris is chayev? Like Dima, maybe no. Old tzoreris, that's a normal type of a thing, is talad the regal. It's a derivative of regal, patura. Regal is patron shazram. So would you say tzoreris is chayev or patron shazram? Somebody says, Mr. Abbott, it's logical, tell her the regular. What do you mean? It's a derivative of regular. Regular is part of the Shazram. Two to the Okay, another halacha. What happens if it sprays pebbles in the street as it normally does, but the pebbles go flying to the neighbor who's right off the street and his window pane gets shattered from the, from the pebbles that are shooting out from the street? Now, what's halacha? So Malay answers him an interesting phrase. Very similar to what we learned in the beginning of Masech the Shabbos. Akira Inkan, there's no picking up. Hanacha Yeshkan, placing down there is. In other words, of course it can be Pater. Because the Akira, where it's picked up from, is in the place that you're Pater. The, 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 the Mazik of Regal is Pater in Rosh Hashanah. Where did it pick up the pebble from? Where did it do its action? Rosh Hashanah. So the Hanach, although it's placed in Rishus Yachad, you have a beer bis de Acher, but uh, I didn't do an Akira. I mean, it's like Akira and Hanach, we talk about Hilcha Shabbos, whatever, but Al Kaponim is like, the Mazik was in Rishus Rabbim. So the fact that damage happened over there doesn't mean anything. The Mazik is allowed to be in Rishus Rabbim, and, and, and therefore it's going to be put. But the Isve, he asked on the first Halacha, there's two Halachas. Like we said, one of it damages, it, both are told by that it sprays in the street. One that damages in the street, one damage in Rishus Yachad. So he had said that you're going to be Patrick because told the regal. He asked from the following Brisa. He said, Malachas Baderech Betiza. The animal was walking on the road and it sprayed. Whether on the private area or whether the public area, Chayiv is going to be Chayiv. So my love, isn't it saying, Betiza Bishus Arabim, Bezika Bishus It sprayed in the street and the damage in the street that you see that you're going to be Chayiv. So if you say that the normal Tzoreris would compare to Karen, which would make you Chayim and Shazram like Karen, because it's similar to Karen, that you pay Chatzinez like Karen, even though Karen is Mashuna and Tzoreris is normal, but Lamai said they both pay Chatzinez. So therefore, you can be Chayim and but according to you that you said, as we mentioned before, all normal Tzoreris would compare to Regal, because it's a lot of the Regal, and even though it pays Nezik Shalom, and it's similar to Tam that pays Nezik, that, 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 that mean, and um, even though the um, over there by regular pays nezik shalom and tzoreis chatz nezik, but lemaisa that's a loch meishem mesinai. So then why does it say b'shosh rabim you can be chayiv? I thought b'shosh rabim you should be pot like regal. So he says lo, no, it's not talking that it was matiz and b'shosh rabim and damage and b'shosh rabim. It is a b'shosh rabim is zikah b'shosh hayachid. It's saying that if it sprayed in, in the street and and it went spraying into someone's private house, that's you're gonna be chayiv. So you might, well, wait, okay, fine, that answers your first halacha. It doesn't contradict. His zika bishul zaram, but you, but Vamid, you had a second halacha that you said. You said akira ain't kan anocha yeshkan. You said I'm not chayiv for where I'm doing the act. Why should be chayiv where the damage is happening? So how does that answer? So on that amalei, he says hajibi. He says yeah, I I retract my earlier statement regarding the second halacha. I agree that if the damage occurred in the rishus ayachid, then you will be chayiv because ubir b'stei acher is the makom of the ubir. The damage is happening in the Steachos, even though the action of the Mazik happened in Rosh Hashanah, where that's where if Hezek happened, it'd be Potter. But since the Hezek happened in Rosh Hashanah, you can be Chayv, so he backed out of the second Allah. However, Eitzhi continues to ask in the Allah of our Mishnah. Mishnah said, if Doris saw a Kli, the animal stepped on the vessel, but she barked and he broke the vessel. Okay. Then we said, if let's say that shard shoots out and breaks another vessel, we said, Al-Risham Misham Nezik Shalom, the first one he pays the full damages, and the last one he pays half damages. Now, we learned the Brisa qualifying the Allah of a mission, but when we say this, Bishus Hanizik is in the victim's property, obviously, because Regal is only Bishus Hanizik. But in the street, Alarisha and Petura, you would be exempt for the first one because it's Regal. Like we said, Regal is part of Bishus Ram. But for the second one, 
which is Tzroi Rois, you'd be Chayev. Ooh, my love, isn't it saying, the Tzor B'Shosh Ram, the B'Tzbred in the B'Shosh Ram, the Zika B'Shosh Ram, the damage was Ram, that you see that you're going to be Chayev. So it contradicts the first Allah of Reb Zeyra. On that law, he says, Loi, no, he teases B'Shosh Ram, the Zika B'Shosh Ayachem. It's not talking about, yes, he was walking the street, and it's sprayed in the street, but it damaged in the private area. Therefore, Yechayev says, so, Babam, you told me Akir and Kanan and that was your second halacha. You said, How could you be Chayev if with Akir was done, your putter, who kids that Tanacha was in the Makam Chayev? Well, he said to him again, How'd you be? I already backed out of that second halacha. I agree there was a teaser B'Shazram, a Zik B'Shazram, that you're going to be Chayev. But the Gemara continues asking and says, Ini, really, is that so? But as Gatin Tamad Beis, Vamar B'Yechanan. B'Yechanan says, later, later on, this parak and Avchavam and Aleph, he says, Ain Chatzin Nazik Chalak. The halach of Chatzin Nazik does not make a difference. Not in the private area, not in the public area. My love, isn't it saying this halacha? Which you tell me doesn't make a difference. If it's sprayed in the street and the damage in the street, you're going to be says, Loi, no. When it's saying there's no difference, it's saying that, um, that if it's sprayed, but the damage has to happen in the Rishos HaYachim. Says the Gemara, I vomit, you said, I kira in kan hanocha yashkan. You said that you can't be chayev if, if, if the damage happened in Rishos HaYachim, if the spring was in Rishos HaYachim. So again, again, I guess he didn't get the memo. Amalei said to him, Hadribi, he says, I already backed out of that halacha, that mm. I agree that even though the, the, the hetiza was Rishos HaYachim, as long as the zika Rishos HaYachim, did you be chayev? But what I do hold, is that if it's a Tisha B'Shosh Rab, but Zika B'Shosh Rab, then that's the regular regal, which is Pater in Rishos Rab. Or Ibai Sem, if you want, you could say to answer this last question, Kiyam Rabbi Yechim, when did Rabbi Yechim say there's no difference in Chatzi Nezik between the Rishos Rab and Rishos Yachad? That was Akeren. That was in the Chatzi Nezik of Keren, because there the Pasuk says Yechatsun, and it says Vachatsu, it says two times to split it, which, yes, coming to tell us you're always going to say Chatzi Nezik. That's just coming to exclude from the one who asked later on that Kerem Rishos Rab should not be chayiv anything from a kavacham from Jain and Regal. And that's all Rebbechon is coming to tell us. That's regarding Karen. The Chatzinez of Tzoyeris, he'll always be part of Mishos Rab because it's Regal and Regal is part of Mishos Rab. So that's not uh, Bechlal going on our sugya of Tzoyeris. The Gemara continues in the related discussion that Yosef, Rav Yehud, the Nesia, Rav Oishia, they were sitting at Kilo, they were on the porch of the Rav Yehud, uh, Rav Yehud, the Nesia. So nothing Milsa B'Menayu, the, the following teaching came out from them. If the animal wags its tail and it damages. So that's normal. And you'll be put in Shusrabim because of regal? Or no? So Malidah, the other one answered, he says, What? What do you think the owner has to hold on to Biznava on his tail, the Yelach, and, and walk with it like that? Of course you put in Shusrabim. It's normal for the animal to wag its tail. And to cause damage. And that he says, Yachim, that's the case. What, Karen Naminim, you could say the same as far regarding Karen also. You think you have to hold on to the animal's horns and walk with it? And, and, and then we don't say that you're part of the Yachim, so he says, How can I compare that? Karen love Urche, the horn's not normal. So that's Karen, so that's, you can be Chayim Chatzin Ezek. Ha Urche, but it's normal for an animal to wag its tail, and that's a tell of the regular, and they're going to be Potter in Rishos Arab. So and that says the Gemara of Chimia Achad Orche. So if it's so normal, my Mebayla, what's the question? Why were you asking regarding when it wags its tail? If you give me Chayev, of course you put it because it's regal. Says Gemara no Kish Kishi Yisei Mebayla. The question was, it has this extra wag to it. Is that normal or is that not? That was the question, and that he was saying yes, it's normal for animals to swag its wag, and therefore even if it's giving an extra swagger in that wag, it's still going to go ahead and be considered as normal. Regarding which one? Oh, Karen. Is it Hezek and Motsi? It's not, uh, I mean, uh, it's not. That's regarding, yeah, I mean, to say that we, do we, are we concerned? Is it Mamoinoi? Meaning, is it, is, is it Knosser or Mamoinoi? That is, it, is it something that we would, would expect? It's still not Orche. It's still not normal. It's just the question is, do we really, or we suspect, do we, do we have to be concerned for it? It'll do, do we have to be concerned it'll do something abnormal? Really is the question. So that would be the Mamoyna Knasa, but still not Orche.
The boy Ravina, Ravina has the following question. What is Kishkashu ba Muslim now? What happens if it wags its male organ and the damage is that way? So what's the question? Do we say Mida by Karen? That just like the Mazik of Karen, that you'll be Chayev, because Karen love Yitzhak Katakafle? By the horns, don't you think its, its inclination gets the better of it and makes it go mad and go crazy and go at its horns? It's also no different where it goes, it's, it's Yetzer, that's what its, 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 its carnal desire is that's, that's getting its male organ uh, uh, aroused and, and therefore damaging with it. Uh, maybe no. Karen Kamenos Lahazik. By Karen, its intent is to damage. By Kamenos Lahazik, here intent is not to damage, it's a, it's a different Yetzer that's capturing it. Take it says, says well, it's not clear what the Allah would be. You're going to kish kishab amasa. Now the Mishnah had said, a town of Goylan, um, that regarding the chickens, so continuing with the, with the mazik of Regal, we said muadin, they're there considered mud lahalak kadarkan to go in the normal way, lashabit to break, bahulu, etc. Now one of the cases was, so yeah, that's a regular mazik of Regal, but what happens if that we said how you had little kosh baragla? Something was tied to a chicken's leg. So, the, so on that, the Mishnah said that Misham Chatzinezik, you're going to pay Chatzinezik. So Amr Rav Hune says, Loi Shana, we did not learn this halacha, that you're going to pay only Chatzinezik and not more. And again, that was because the animal was jumping and, and, it, and it, it threw it, so it's going to be like a Tzreiris. But the Gemara calls that Elish Niksh Me'elam. This is only talking about if it was tied on by itself this bucket, let's say, on the foot of the chicken, that's where you're saying, okay, that the owner of the chicken is going to be for having thrown this bucket and causing damage, which is the mazik of Tzvaris with Chatzinezik. Avokashri Adam. But if, let's say, a person tied the bucket onto the chicken's leg, Chayib, the one who tied it is going to be Chayib Nezik Shalim. Because that's boyer, and if a person trips on it, that person can be Chayib for the Nezik Shalom of tying the bucket onto the chicken's leg. Now, the Gemara has the following question. Really? So Armish is talking about that it was tied on by itself? Nikshim when it gets tied on by itself by the Allah of the Mishnah, man chayev. Who is chayev to pay this chatzin As the Gemara explains. Ilim if it's the owner of the bucket, who it's not his own chicken. Hey, what's the case talking about? Ida atzne, if he had put away this bucket and he hid it away, so on the suit, he's oinus, and therefore it shouldn't be his liability for having made any bar. Be loyatzne, and if he didn't hide it, well, Peshehu, then he's negligent, and then he should have to pay the whole damages because it's his bar that he threw into the Shasarabim that he's liable for having caused damage, which then got tied onto the chicken's leg. So the other says, Gemar, it's too much where he put away in his house. And then the chicken took it out of his house. And Chayv Baal Tarnagal, the owner of the chicken, is going to be liable. So the Gemara says, but I understand the case. It's actually pretty complex what the Gemara is saying over here, but the Gemara says, my shno, what's the difference, Kuli Nezik Deloy? Why are you saying that the owner of the chicken is not high of all the damages? Because if Sibit says the Pasuk in Shemais Kiyiftach Ishbo, and the man's going to open up a pit, which she judges below Shar, but not if his ox makes a pit. Now, this bucket, essentially, it, you could call it the words that we're using, the chicken dug that pit. Right? Not intent, whatever. That's like, he, he dug a pit. Let's say the chicken would go take his. Beacon, start pecking, pecking, making a pit. Here also, he went and got his foot stuck onto this bucket. So, so, so then, if that's the case, that's why you put it from Nezik Shalom. So, Chatzin Nezik Nami. So then, even from half damage is also Ish Bar Bale Shar Bar. So, only if a man digs a pit, not, not if an ox, in this case, a chicken, makes a pit, not really a pit, but the bucket. So, how do you understand the Allah the mission that you're saying that the owner of the chicken would be Chayv Chatzin Nezik? El rather says the Gemara, as we really explained before, Masnit, and the mission is only talking about the Adya Aduye. We're talking about where the chicken threw the bucket and it broke with its throwing vessels, which that makes it Tzreiris. And Rashi says, interestingly, even if a person tied on the bucket, he also wouldn't pay. Only one that would pay would be Chatzinezik, the owner of the chicken. And the one who tied on would be Pater. Why? Because... <laughs> As we, when we said originally that if a, a guy ties it on, it was only if someone trips on that bucket that he tied onto the chicken's foot. Here, no one tripped on his pit. It's the animal, the chicken, that threw the, 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 the bucket. That's Tzroi race. And that's where the owner of the chicken is Michayev Chatzinezek. And V'chiyit med Ravuna, you're right, Ravuna's teaching actually is not qualifying the Allah of the Mishnah. Because he was trying to say, that 
oh, it's Nikshami Elov. Nothing to do with Nikshami Elov, that Lacha Mishnah. Lacha Mishnah would be even if someone tied it on. It's all about the chicken having thrown it because, because even if we got tied on or someone tied on, what would, what, what would be the relevance of Chatsi Nesek? So our Mishnah has nothing to do with, Rav Huna's teaching is not qualifying the Lacha Mishnah. Allah HaMesh doesn't make it with how God tied on. It's a chicken throwing it, which is Chatzin Ezek Yitzrayus. Rav Huna said his teaching, but I'll admit, I said in general, and he was saying like this, the little Hefker, if you have a bucket, that's Hefker. No one owns this bucket. Some, some, some uh, Mishleich Mona's bucket that no, no one ever knew whose it was. Somewhere laying in the street. And I'm Rav Huna, Rav Huna says like this, Nik Shumi Elov. So if the chicken gets tied on to this bucket, and now a person trips on that bucket, Pater, there's no liability. Like Rashi explains, who should be liable? The bucket has no owner. The owner of the chicken? No. Ish bar v'loy shar bar. You, you can't make yourself liable for a bar that your chicken made. So it'll be pater. So the question is, oh, but then kashi adam says, the, but if let's say a person tied it on, chayev. The one who tied it on, it's going to be Rashi says the words that Taisus discusses. Rashi makes it sound like because he, he, he was acquired it with Hagba. When he went to tie on the bucket, he picked it up. He was kind it. Now the bucket has an owner. That's how Rashi says that, um, that the, that's why the liability of the one who, who's tying it on. But the Gemara says, but wait a second, I still don't understand it. Mishum Mai Chayev. For what exactly are you going to be Chayev for? As Rashi explains, because this is not a bona fide bar, because it didn't damage where he tied it on. The chicken dragged it to somewhere else. So it's not my bar that caused the damage. So why if the one who tied on is going to be So Rav Huna Bamanayach, he says, yeah, this is a halacha that we taught already in the Vav Medalov, Mishum Bayre Hamas Galgo. That we learned out that when you have, a, you have a pit that you made that rolls somewhere else, because animals or people in the street kick it around, that we learned that from Etzad Shava. He said, yes, we know from a common denominator, it's not just bar, it's bar and something else, that will teach me that you could be chayiv on such a thing because a common denominator of both of them, and therefore that's going to be the liability of the one who ties the bucket onto the leg of the chicken. I continue to halacha, the next Mishnah, which continues uh, the theme from the Mishnah of Tezvav Mabez, which we spoke about regal, and now we're talking about shain. Ketzad HaShin Mu'edes, how is the mazik of shain considered as a mu'ed? So that's lechel esaraola. That if it eats what's normal for it, it eats animal food, and it goes into someone else's property and eats it, that's where it's moved for. So to have a imam at this lechel pedis biodakis, an animal is moved to eat vegetables and, 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 and fruits. Now, achlik, so say if it eats uh, garments or vessels, sham chatzinez, it's only going to pay half the damage. That's abnormal. That's the mazik of karen. Now, but medlam, when we say this, nizik, this whole liability of shane is only in the victim's property. But in the public domain, it's going to be because again, we need a beer, but stay achar has to be in the other person's field. And also, which you're going to explain, even for ksus vekelem, which, which seemingly is keren, they're also going to be potter, the ksus ram, the going to explain why that is. Now, vimnenis, now if let's say that the owner had some benefit through the animal eating this other person's paris. Which obviously he gains, he doesn't have to feed the animal. So although we said you're potter bishusarabim because it's shane, however, the Mishnah tells us Mishalemis Mishanenis. The owner has to pay what his benefit was, which that's not a full fledged payment, as he was going to explain. That he does have to pay. Says the Mishnah, Kitta Mishalemis Mishanenis. How do you qualify this teaching if he pays what his benefit is? So, so again, if the animal eats from the street, which you're potter, Mishalemis Mishanenis, you're going to pay what the benefit is. But if it eats from the sides of the street, Oh, then Mishalim is Mashazika. Then the owner has to pay what the damages is. Like the Allah of Karen, the Thomas Chatzi Nezik, and Mudas Nezik Shalom. The Gemara is going to explain why that is also um, qualified like Karen. But be that it may, then you're going to have to pay whatever the damage is. Mi Pesach HaChanos. If I ate from the opening of the store, Mishalim is Mashanandis. It pays whatever just the owner benefited. Mi Toich HaChanos. If it's from the store itself, Mishalim is Mashazika is going to have to pay whatever the actual damage is, like we said, regarding Tom and Mu'ad accordingly. Now the Gemara quotes a b'risa that elaborates on the loch of the Mishnah. Talk about learning the b'risa. Hashem mu'ed is We said the mazik of Shane is a Mu'ad to eat what's fit for it. It's a kid's household. 
So behemish and nechdes and lachatzar nezik. So like we said, an animal goes into the victim's courtyard. Ba'ach la echel narula eats normal food that an animal would eat. B'shas amash narula it drank beverages that it would drink. Shalom nezik shalom. No one has to pay full damages. B'chein tzutu chaya a wild animal she nechdes and lachatzar nezik goes into the victim's property. Retarfer behem of ba'ach labasa and it kills the animal and eats the meat, which is what wild animals would do. Shalom nezik shalom. The owner of the wild animal has to pay the full damages. Now upada she'ach la sairin. So here it gets a little interesting. If a cow eats barley, which really, that's donkey food. Or if a donkey eats vetch, which is actually cow food. Or if a dog licks the oil. Or if swine eats a piece of meat, which, although these animals are not really accustomed to eat those types of foods, but since it is normal for them to eat it if they're in the press situation, let's say when they're starving, so we do consider that Rui Lehen, and therefore Misham Nesik Shalem, so therefore the owner will have to pay the full damages in those cases. Now, based on that, Amar Papa says, Hashtam, and now that you said, Kol Midi Dilav Urchi, anything that's not really the normal for it to always be eating it. But it will eat in a present situation. I mean, it's normal to eat it in a Deichik situation. Like these? That you tell me Shmei let's consider eating even not in the pressing situation. So it's always going to be, even in the non-pressing situation. So then, tamri. So regarding this cat that eats a date, which it's normal for it to eat in the pressing situation, because like Rashi explains, garments and vessels, even in the pressing situation, is not normal for it to eat it. It must be it's intending to damage. But these things, even though it's not normal, but in the pressing situation it would be normal, or let's say if we have a donkey that eats fish. So Masham Nezik Shalom will pay full damages because when it's starving, it would do it. So even when it's not starving, you'll pay Nezik Shalom like regular Mazik Abshain. But the Gemara brings a story related to this. There was a donkey that ate bread. And it also chewed up the basket. So Rabbi Huda Lasham Nezik Shalom Rabbi Huda required the owner to pay. Full damages for the bread. The basket have a damages because that's abnormal. It doesn't usually you don't usually eat a basket. Now Rashi just points out it must be that the victim was grabbing from the mazik the chatzinezik because we don't done dinik knas in bubble, and chatzinezik is knas. So this didn't made liable in bubble was you know just in case the nizik grabs uh, what's owed him. But that's what he held him responsible. So the Gemara says, wait, by my why? Even the Orchel Mechel Nama, the Gemara has also an interesting question. Once you tell me it's normal for it to eat the bread, Orchel Nama Leflusi Salad, that means makes it makes it also normal to chew the basket. Why? Because when you're chewing the bread, you're going to chew the basket with it. You know, you have those uh, packages and you're eating the plastic around it also. You know, it's always kvetching the 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 zaftige kite, you know. So if it's eating the bread and that's normal, so again, this also goes into discussion about is it the circumstance, is it the is it the animal. Like, but the Gemara is assuming in this question, at least, that that's normal now to chew the basket. Because this situation where the bread's in the basket, you're going to eat the basket too. Says the Gemara, you're right. And the Gemara seems to agree to this idea. But the Gemara says, but the story was the Ochel Bahadur Palace. It first ate the bread, and then it chewed. You know, the, 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 the chicken, you squeeze out the madach from it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, after it ate the bread, then, then it chewed the basket. So again, that's Mashuna. Uh, because you already had the, the, the bread. So that's what's going to be chatzin nezik. But now the Gemara asks actually on the bread. Upas orchehu? Is the bread really normal to be chayv nezik shalom? We were assuming, yeah, the donkey, yeah, it's eating bread. It'll eat bread. It's not true. But in Minus, there's a price that says, achla pasu basar, betavshal, if an animal eats bread and meat and whatever cooked dish, mesham chatzin nezik, you only pay half the damages. Because animals don't eat the food that we eat. What? Well, but yeah, it's saying it's saying chatzinazik. Obviously, that we don't consider it, uh, or it's disagreeing with the Allah of the tchak, whatever it is. But saying you pay chatzinazik, how could you say it pays nezik shalom on the bread? My love, isn't it talking about a domesticated animal? It's like, well, no, it's about bechaya. Wild animals don't eat bread, even al day tchak. But a donkey would eat bread al day tchak, and therefore, yeah, for a donkey, he was correct in paskening that's going to be nezik shalom. Says the Gemara, how could you say chay is talking about a wild animal? But one of the cases you told me was bust or meat, or chihu, while the animals eat meat. So why why do you say one of the cases that's chatzin was meat? It says, no, the midfi. It was roasted meat, so a barbecue. 
wild animals don't like your good roast with your famous sauce, 42 sauce, whatever. He doesn't, he's not interested in He wants a roya, flesh. That's what he's looking for. Or well, the another shot you could say is Batavia. The, the animal, the wild animal we were talking about was a deer. A deer does not eat bread and meat. But yeah, a donkey would eat bread. Or well, the one last answer, La'ilam Bebehema. No, could be talking about with a regular animal. So it's a regular animal, doesn't it contradict us regarding the bread? No, Ubebsaira. The bread was on the table. An, an animal would not come onto the table and eat the bread over there. Therefore, that made it into Mishon into Chatzi Nazik. But regular bread, it is normal for an animal to eat it and therefore you would be chayim nezik shalom and therefore that's why he paskin for the bread I mean nezik shalom bring it to any time